Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. First tonight, the story of an Aussie war veteran and the woman who posed as his carer, then killed him and took all of his money. Reporter Evan Batten has the details. Evan? Oh, Tracy, Kerry Forrest would love us all to believe that Bill Adamson died of natural causes, but in truth, she killed him. And tonight we have never before seen police video taken the night that Bill was found inside his motel room. A judge has found her guilty of his murder. But listen now to her elaborate stories as she lies and tries to cover her tracks. Do you have any knowledge as to how he died? What do you mean? Do you know how he died? In his sleep. Lies. Oh, it's a dead person. Lies. Were you involved in his death in any way? And yet more lies. Like, I wouldn't have thought that because someone snores, they're about to die. This is probably the worst betrayal that you can ever have. So tell me how their relationship developed from there. So oh, he just um, would ring me to find out how I was. And... Posing as a carer. Oh, God. Kerry Forrest has been exposed as a calculated, cold-blooded killer. It's okay, take your time. But as brazen as she was foolish to think she'd get away with this. So William would ring to see how I was. And then we just struck up a friendship. It was an audacious crime. She was his carer who became his lover and finally his killer. That's Bill there, a picture of health at 84, able to walk briskly uphill just days before his death. As a younger man, the veteran survived the horrors of war, only to have his life taken decades later by someone supposed to care for him in his old age. His wife Beryl had only just died when Kerry came on the scene as Bill's carer, and just six months later, he was dead and she was hundreds of thousands of dollars richer. The times are really blurry. When I did what, um, you just don't think you're going to be asked questions. Um, and this is around? Kerry Forrest in the performance of her life. Oh, it's her version of what happened, shown here for the first time. No, 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 no. Not fully dressed. He took his cardigan off. He took his shirt off. I'm not understanding your question. Police have just found Bill's decomposing body in the couple's motel room. It's a crime scene. Now it's well after midnight and Kerry's trying to persuade detectives there's nothing suspicious, that Bill died of natural causes. On, on Wednesday afternoon, he was complaining a bit more than usual. She's at pains to distance herself from his death. Well, I've never given him medication. His no. money. Who has access to that account? Just him. And his heart. Where was his next step? I can't tell you what's in his head. Yes, Kerry even denies their relationship was anything more than employer and employee. Did it ever develop anything more apart from being a carer and no. someone who he's cared for? No. So just to be blunt, there was no sexual relationship between uh, the two? No. But Bill certainly thought they had a future. With talk of marriage, they even had plans to build a new home together. And yes, they had a joint bank account, but she lied to police about that too. And this is the prize she was willing to kill for, Bill's $700,000 home. She told a string of lies to whoever she needed to just to get control of his assets. The house was sold very quickly, leaving the pair with almost $350,000 profit in a joint account, but nowhere to live. It was done so fast, Bill had to store some of his things in a neighbour's garage. Here he is looking for his medication. Yeah. The pair checked into a motel on Monday, leaving the do not disturb sign on the door for a week. <laughs> Only because the um, lady barged in one morning and um, we are still in bed, so that scared the life out of us. But now we can see that was all part of Kerry's sinister plot to get him alone, poison him and take his money, hoping to convince everyone he died of natural causes. We actually lied in bed and watched Tilly. All day? Did you uh, leave the room at all? Yeah, um, I got, went up to Woolies and I got some um, takeaway, um, the hot chicken. Eating chicken and watching TV, she tells police they stayed in the room all week chatting. And she stresses it was in separate beds. What time did you go to bed? Uh, didn't really go to bed. 
Wednesday was still eating the chicken. Um, did I go out on Wednesday? Oh, God. Um. Bear in mind, right now it's close to 2 a.m. Kerry's not under arrest, but she's tired. And right now she wants police to think she's cooperating, but she's still trying to get her story straight. He was snoring really, really loud. Uh, now, why is that unusual to you? Well, I've never heard him snore. Wednesday night was the last time she saw him alive and she offers up an obscure idea that Bill died from extreme exhaustion. Um, he, he actually said that um, he was feeling really tired and he said, I haven't felt like this in over 50 years. I, I wasn't expecting to feel like this. No, I didn't quite understand what he meant by that. Bill Adamson died a very slow death right here on this motel bed. The court heard it would have taken more than two hours for him to pass away and he had an extremely high level of morphine in his body. It was quite possible he'd been fed more than 10 tablets. The woman who claims to be his carer says he slept and she didn't speak to him for two days. It would have been like bad manners of me to wake him if he was asleep and because I wouldn't wildest dream think that he wasn't going to ever wake up. Instead, she left him at the motel and went on a shopping spree, even going to the dentist. And what work did you get done? I had six crowns. Finally, on Friday, she notices he hasn't moved or spoken for days. He was stone cold. Mm -hmm. he, so then, yeah? He was white. You could see that he wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. Forget crocodile tears. She has no tears at all to wipe away. His mouth... His, his mouth was like a little bit ajar. Well, I thought he was deceased and that he died in his sleep. Well, what was your first instinct to bring the doctor and not triple R? Well, he, he was dead. I've always been told that an ambulance will not carry a dead body away. It was just another lie. Crown says it's obvious she was keen to get a death certificate from her GP to avoid a police investigation. Experts found he died from a lethal dose of morphine, the very same tablets Kerry was prescribed. The judge was satisfied Kerry Forrest was guilty of his murder, crushing up pills and feeding them to him, possibly in his coffee. When police were finally called, they say the stench of death in here was simply overpowering. I believe Mr Adamson had been dead for more than two days. But if you believe Kerry Forrest, she only found his body here at four o'clock on the Friday afternoon. But still, it took more than seven hours before she rang triple zero. Were you involved in his death in any way? No. Within days, she moved all his cash into her own bank accounts and within three months, she gambled the lot away. More than $300,000 through the pokies. It left nothing in his estate for Bill's stepson, John Adamson, who wasn't even told of his father's death until after Kerry had arranged the cremation. She lied from the very beginning. She attempted to cover up what she had done, but it was so amateurish, to be quite honest, that uh, I don't know how she ever felt that she wouldn't be discovered. Lawyer Sam Macedoni says it's one of the worst cases of betrayal he's seen. He's been promised a lot more and probably gets a lot more attention than just a carer would normally give. It's very cruel. Kerry Forrest will be sentenced in August.